Well, hi guys. So I thought I would have a mess around today with the RX10 Mark IV in kind of a studio conditions. We utilize a lot of LED lighting nowadays. And I've got my new LED lighting bars. I've got this one here just turned on now, just on a, uh, I think it's 5500K. But also it can do multiple different colors, which we're gonna experiment around with. And as you can see on camera, I've actually got a one of the glass balls, you know, that you, know, you can shoot through and actually end up with some interesting uh, sort of uh, upside down images and, and things like that. We, we call it a, a sphere, a glass sphere. But you also get some interesting reflections through. So basically, if you move the light around, you're going to get that shadow and also light spot moving around. So obviously come closer, it gets wider. You can see there, come closer, it gets wider and narrow. And that's actually, at the moment, coming through the base of the uh, sphere sort of stand, which adds a bit of interest to it. But you are getting some interesting, uh, nice reflections going on and, and light casting and things like that. So I just thought it would be a bit of fun, a bit of experimentation. We've also got the Rotolite AOS just above, as you can see, just up here. I'm just waiting for the battery to finish charging. It's almost done. Uh, the battery is done. So we can basically plug it in, get it charged. Because it, my Rotolite Air has actually had a problem. Uh, the main power board failed. So unfortunately, it needed to be repaired. Rotolite are very, very good. And I've actually got a, a video uh, on my channel that you can actually watch that has actually got the a bit of description of what actually happened. So if you want to watch that, have a have a check out. Rotolite are amazing. They did it, you know, not free. Obviously, I don't mind. The, the end of the day, the light's four years old. It's well out of warranty, but they were amazing. They dealt with it very, very quickly. Everything's built in Britain or Great Britain. So, you know, it was a very, very quick turnaround. You know, it's not a cheap Chinese light as such i mean these ones aren't cheap but they are made in china um so if this does go wrong the likelihood of me actually getting it repaired is probably quite remote probably have to go in the bin and buy a new one but with the rotor lights they are fully repairable which is really nice anyway uh so basically we're gonna start snapping away utilizing the rx10 mark IV in studio conditions we can shoot flash the limitations of a leaf shutter in studio is that we don't have a high burst rate so you can't do things like dance shooting very quickly you know you can't do a burst like the a7r4 for example i can do 10 frames per second with flash no drama whatsoever the rx10 mark 4 can't do that i think it's dropped down to about two or three um at the push um and that's that's really pushing it so you are limited, limited in that side of things. But for still life and things like this, where we're messing around, having to play with the lights and things, it's, it's still very usable. So basically, I'm going to set a few different scenarios up. I'm just going to take some photos. I'm shooting f5.6, so we've got to make sure we've got everything in focus. At the moment, I'm shooting at... around about 35 millimetres at the moment. So I've zoomed in a little bit. Obviously on my phone, I'm on wide angle, so you can kind of see what's going on. You can kind of see. Um, obviously with the RX-10, you are limited. So if I zoom in too much, sort of mid-range, you can't actually get that close to stuff. So your, your benefits are sort of up to about 35 mil uh, or so. You can actually focus relatively closely. But then if you want to get closer, um, but more zoomed in, as such you know with a narrow angle of view you have to be at sort of the 600 mark because that way you can get 72 centimeters away from your, your target such or your, your um object and you can get quite good close-up photos the the way the um camera works is something to do with the lens that's the reason why you can't sort of have close focus in between the major range you know so um, you can focus right up to the end of the uh, 24 millimeters. You can focus literally the end of your uh, lens shade, lens hood. It's, it's incredible how you can do that. 
Um, it's really, really good, especially for like down in the grass and there's a you know a bug or something or a leaf or something like that. You can get really close to it that way, but it's a wide angle view. Then if you zoom into 600 millimeters, you can actually get a really nice, you know, almost a macro style image, which is a more telephoto look to it. So it is very usable. Obviously it's limited in some respects. You can obviously get, click on um, macro filters as such. I haven't actually used one yet, but some other guys that I know who have got the RX-10 Mark IV do use them, they enjoy them. Uh, you know, they do work quite well, apparently. So I've seen some of the shots, they look pretty good. So as an all-in-one camera, you can modify it slightly to make it work for you, um, however you want to use it. So I generally use it for everyday use with some wildlife, um, a little bit of portraiture occasionally, uh, you know, landscapes and things like that. So it does work very well, very well as a, an all-in-one camera. It's absolutely amazing. So anyway, let's, um, I'm going to snap some shots here. I'm actually going to go back quite a long way and shoot the globe or sphere, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to see exactly how close we can actually get. Um, as a focus point. So, for example, it won't focus at 170. We are, sorry, we, we are around about 30 inches away from the sphere and at 170 millimeters, it won't do it. If we're going to 600, it still won't do it. So I've got to go back a bit. Oops. We should, we should be able to do it from here, I reckon. Um, doo -doo -doo. At the moment, you can see, as you zoomed in right in, as you can see there, you can see actually a reflection of the rotor light else in shot. You can see the, the circle. You can also see, which I quite like actually, the way, so sometimes different types of lighting source or ways of lighting stuff will make a huge difference to your images. So at the moment I'm just going to stick a diffuser in front of the uh, light there and it should soften off the rotor light quite a bit but obviously you use it, lose a lot of the light. So we'll take it away, you'll see it suddenly comes back. So if I put it back in, but then I can crank the light up a bit more, it's a bit more like full power and you can see there that it does make a difference. It also softens off the shape of the light. So if we move it away now, you can still see it. But, it, you know, there's lots of ways of doing it. You can use tracing paper. Um, you can use grease proof paper from the kitchen if it's a white one. And if you want to add a little bit of a, a yellow tint to it, you can get the sort of yellowy colored silicon paper. There's loads of ways of just even a piece of white paper. You know, you, if you're utilizing a, a desk lamp or something like that, and you're not utilizing the, um, you know, real world sort of uh, soft boxes and stuff like that you can utilize anything that's translucent and soft. The uh, Rotolite else has actually got a diffuser in it, but only a thin one at the moment. Or oh, did I take it out? Oh, there is one in there. Um, but because it's right up against the actual LEDs, they do shine through quite obviously sometimes. So especially in reflections like this, you can actually see that it's actually obviously there. So anyway, we're gonna take a few pictures now. So we have some interesting colours going on. Um, but straight away you can see the lighting change. So if I actually turn the rotor light AFS off, I'll just turn it down, the lighting actually changes quite nicely. Now I've got these two RGB lights. I actually quite like the way they're curving, the reflections of them are actually curving in the actual glass themselves. You can actually see that. So if I move that one around. Maybe go side on, like so. They actually work quite well as a close up. So it's a case of, you know, it, it's quite interesting. Laying behind, which could give an interesting view. In fact, it's changed the, expo it's changed the exposure completely. It's a bit like an eye. But obviously, if we adjust the exposure now, that could look quite cool. So give it a really eye, yeah, it looks like an eye now. The whole point of photography is that we experiment, we play with, you know, different ideas, 
you know, you can ask as many questions as you like in the real world, you know, but at the same time, you know, if you don't experiment, you don't learn, you know, so if you don't make mistakes, you're never going to learn until you actually do it, learn from the mistakes and then sort of better yourself. It's the only way forward. So the, the way we are going to shoot is another, uh, this anyway, is, let's say, no flash. I've not turned the AOS on, so basically we're just utilising the colour lights. Um, and I may change them to different colours. I'm going to turn them down or up, depending on how we want them to see in shot. Because they can be, I mean, even though they've got a diffuser panel on them, they can be quite intense, as you can see there. Even the RX-10 now, as we zoom out, you can see some white areas where it's actually too bright for the camera to deal with as you can see we, we stop it down you start to get the full full color and that's when we can see the you know the ball suddenly suddenly becomes a lot darker because we're basically looking at the light the light meter as such or light reading off the lights which are a lot brighter than the ball so you know it's just a case of experimenting like i said and learning from what we need to do so at the moment now for example i'm at one thousandth of a second at f5.6 but we're actually um, light metering off the ball which is actually one 1.3 stops underexposed now so just to put it into you know to concept when we dropped it down to about 80th of a second which gave us a nice look of the ball we were actually overexposed by 1.3 stops so you know you can you can adjust it by a lot without having too much of a hassle you know it's it's going to be interesting so might not be the interesting photos of the world. It might not be competition winners. It might not be the best photo in the world. But we're having fun. We're you know just having an experiment, just learning, because this is going to come into play with a lot of other things. It's not just a lens ball that's got a few lights bouncing off it or you know casting through it. You know if we get paid jobs and things like that. You know having some practice in beforehand, it means you can mess around. You can get stuff right before you even start. So for example, if I swap the lens ball for the tennis ball so we can stay on this got hair on it I'll get rid of that in a minute we can now look at the tennis ball and think right okay straight away uh, the colours don't really do a lot because it's almost fluorescent yellow the ball but you can see a dark patch right at the front so what we need to do is bring the lights forward or at least one to cast some light onto the front of the ball and in fact we do need to bring both Round just to hide that other edge of the ball there. But what's quite cool is you can actually see, let's zoom in a bit, you can actually see, if it wants to zoom, we've actually got some colour bouncing off the actual, not the stitching, but the rubber join, which is actually the pink. So this is where we can start messing around with the exposure again. As you can see, you can see hot spots. So this is where your diffusion needs to come into play. So we can see there left of the S on Slazenger, that's overexposed now. But if I bring it down, you can see it starts to underexpose and slowly. So that's about right as a shot. But obviously we've got some interesting colours going on as well. So you can see a bit of a blue, on the obviously blue background, but you can see the pink and the purple coming through. It does look quite cool. Mobile phone's not really doing itself justice, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. So, I shall try and take a couple of pictures with the phone just to see how they turn out, but at the moment we're going to shoot with the RX10. So I'll take that shot now, actually. A couple of shots there. And I was actually shooting at uh, 1 400th of a second there. I'll tell you what, that's one hell of a sharp shot. So I'm actually at 400 millimeters. And basically, I can remove it slightly. There, he says. I always take multiple shots. One, we're shooting an electronic shutter anyway, so there's no wear and tear. And two, just in case I move the camera a little bit or something's not quite right, I've actually got another shot either side of the one I'm actually shooting. So just so you know, and that is sharp as you like. In fact, I'm gonna zoom in on the ball itself. In fact, I might actually take a timer shot. 
just to stop the camera moving around. Two second timer, there you go, one shot. So we've actually got some interesting lighting now actually, bouncing off the, like I say, the, the, I'll zoom in. You can see it there on the, on the ball, you can see the pink on the actual rubbery part. It's actually quite cool, but it's making the, making the tennis ball glow. It's the fluorescent sort of uh, the lighting that these LEDs are producing is actually really, really cool. So that looks really nice actually, as a as straight out as a one image, it looks really cool. So what I'm gonna do is actually move the lights back a bit. I need to remove that hair. Move it back at a shot. I'm just gonna remove. The hair. I'm gonna bring the ball back a bit. I do need to. To level that up slightly as well, it's not quite there. Is that about right? That looks pretty good actually. This is where my problems just started. So I've backed out now to 370 and it won't focus. This is where I am now. Um, sort of mid-range with the focusing, so I'll come back slightly. Yeah, it won't do it at all. So as you can see there, it's struggling to focus because we're sort of midway on the zooming part of the lens, so it can't deal with being slightly mid-drift. So this is where its limitations are on the lens. So if we go in, it's absolutely fine. You know, we can even, you know, Teleconverter or built-in teleconverter or the clear image zoom, we can even zoom in that much extra. But then we go back to there, you know, it's actually struggling slightly, so let's get back a bit. There we go. And then we can take the shot. We could open it up a bit, go to F4. Now we're at 1 800 for a second. It might just soften the background slightly. Very slightly, not a huge amount in it. But depending on what you're shooting, it depends on what you want to see and how you're going to expose for it. So even at F4, I could shoot at 1 400 for a second and get an interesting difference we're shooting raw anyway but as you can see you will see in in the photos it's super sharp super clean and you know it's really really cool so, actually... so as usual i thought i'd mess around with the hfr mode so shooting at 250 frames per second in this shot here just spraying a little bit of water over the ball or the sphere and then this one's 500 frames per second as you can see that just a little bit of mist falling down onto the onto the actual uh, glass sphere there. Basing on the lighting and everything worked quite nicely. Um, just messed around for about 10-15 minutes, just having a little play. Um, I haven't really used those lights much yet, so it's just a case of you know, just experimenting and seeing what I can actually capture. And as you can see, the lighting you can change quite a lot, even with just two RGB lights. I mean, even one RGB light, you could create quite an interesting uh you know set of photos this is the blue light on the left hand side and it's casting enough because i was quite close to the background casting a lot of blue onto the background which is which is obviously quite handy but also you can see quite a bit of light um reflection through the little stand there as well which was obviously changing the way it's cast onto the uh onto the surface there uh, just added quite an interesting shot just to show you this this shot here is actually shot iso 1000 on the rx10 so it's totally capable it's no real drama whatsoever no noise reduction uh, exposure was in camera and just lighting 
that just adjusting my shutter speeds and you can see actually the bottom of the sphere where that is actually the top of the background um, being reflected in so plenty of uh, you know you can adjust your shutter speeds and aperture and to give you what you kind of want with the amount of light you've got if you move the light further back the light is going to get dim obviously if you move the light further forward it's going to be brighter with the tennis ball though, I was quite impressed with it, actually how sharp this image was um, shot at 600 mil and you can actually see obviously the colors on the rubber as I said before but just how nice and sharp it is and with the RX10 a lot of people will slag off or moan about the one inch sensor but the benefits of a one inch sensor over a full frame sensor or even APS-C is you've got a bit more depth because the sensor is smaller this is why mobile phones are so good for general people so because a smaller sensor gives you more depth so you know we are shooting at f5.6 which is something like the equivalent of f13 or something like that um, on a full frame uh, camera so we can utilize uh, even f4 f5.6 with a decent amount of depth even at 600 millimeters and it actually helps you get a little bit more in focus i mean ideally i probably wanted to be about f8 to f10 possibly to really pull the edge of that tennis ball into focus but i actually quite like it so the whole of the um, lettering on the tennis ball there is nice and sharp if i was to shoot that with the a7r4 for example with full frame uh, camera at the same uh, zoom say 600 millimeters or even 400 millimeters if i was at f5.6 half of the writing would probably be out of focus because you've got a much shallower depth of field naturally so you know it does come into play you know so people need to stop worrying about having a, a smaller sensor a lot of the time it actually actually helps you get a better shot um, and actually gives you more an accurate shot because like I say you get a little bit more depth into your image so when shooting animals and things like that you can actually end up with a little bit more in focus the face face and everything even at f4 but if you had a 600 mil f4 on a full frame camera you would struggle to actually get enough of the animal's face or everything in focus so you'd have to stop down anyway so there's a lot of benefits to it yes obviously there's some negatives as well but generally i think it's a bit of a win-win situation uh you know even on things like this so yeah really just a little bit of uh experimentation for myself i haven't had much time the last month or so been so busy with work um you know many many hours and quite stressed really so that's why you haven't seen many videos recently. I've taken a little bit of a break from a lot of things and you know, just needed a bit of time out. So hopefully I'll be coming back to normal very soon. So please check out my other videos. Please um, comment on anything. If you need any help with the RX10 Mark IV or the A7R4 and any of the other Sony cameras, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to click the th thumbs up bit if you like the video. Also, please share the channel and uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the little notification bell as well so you get notifications when I upload a new video. Um, thank you for watching and like I say, I try and keep everything as real as possible. I know I go um and um a bit. I don't script stuff. I try and do it as a real world situation just to show you and everybody what I'm actually doing. Yes, I, have, I do cut things out a bit more now, uh, you know, but it's, I try and keep it as natural as possible. So I hope, hopefully people do like that. I know there's a few people who don't but it's the way I am and I like to be a little bit different um, but also mainly real. I hate being fake so hopefully that's good with everyone but anyway I'll see you soon, there'll be new videos coming uh, shortly so keep, on, keep a watch out and I'll see you soon.